So I'm going to basically do this webinar kind of not as a super formal one like I normally do uh, for IU because it's just kind of an impromptu one that I wanted to do today because, you know, because of how the market was going, I have a lot of thoughts and I figured I'd share them instead of keeping them in my own head. Uh, and then the Bitcoin cash thing happened as I was working on this. So it it's just going to be basically me showing you stuff on the web and because uh, I couldn't finish my slides. <laughs> so uh, you guys sent in a bunch of questions. I'm going to actually reload those right now. That way they're all updated. Um, let me go back. So anyways, some of the biggest things that people ask me are, you know, how and where do I trade this stuff? So obviously the market's going crazy. Your attention's probably half and half. Pay attention to what's going on and maybe listening to me and who knows. But anyways, point being is that I wanted to just answer your questions as fast as I can with thoughts about all this stuff. Um, my thoughts on it, where I think it's going, and, you know, how to kind of read this market. Um, because when I started trading it, I didn't even realize it until like March. And it trades... 99% exactly like OTC markets do on US stock market. So, and that was kind of like my biggest edge was trading OTCs. So when I started to trade this stuff, it was so blatantly obvious. And I just got a phone call from Alex about how easy he killed these trades while I was kind of half trading it and half, you know, doing this. It, it really is that easy when you actually figure out and learn how to trade yourself because it's all human psychology. And that's one of the things that I've learned, you know, in the last seven years is trading these charts and trading this is purely human psychology, taking advantage of uh, momentum to the upside and greed, fear, all that stuff. So when you figure that out, and that was kind of one of the things I posted today on Twitter was, you know, if I would have learned human psychology before trading, it would give you such a big edge because of the advantages of knowing when everybody's freaking out based on looking at a chart. Um, so, um, a few of the questions, you know, that I got asked today were, you know, how did you know Bitcoin was going to get, you know, go under 18,000? I think like four or five people asked that. It was really just simple. I don't even think the chart's working at the moment on here. Um, but it was literally simple technical analysis. You know, knowing that these specific charts do the same thing over and over and over and over again, that once it broke the 18,000 support, especially where it had been, you know, the, the very likelihood of how stagnant it was, there wasn't a whole lot of action to the upside, it failed to the upside, is things go down. And it was very obvious as far as if it's going to break the support, it's likely to get absolutely crushed. Just because it's where it's at, where it came from, and everything else. So, learn technical analysis. If you already haven't, you might have a long way to go. But um, the charts, everybody seems to always show me, you know, uh, log scale and you don't really trade off a log scale log scale be great for like long-term investing if you're gonna trade this stuff do it with the linear linear is gonna give you more accurate representation of what's going on more frequently and more you know and more uh, consistently because obviously a chart like this is something that I've seen quite a few times and it's very obvious that it's close to the top yeah I said it was close to the top at like 7,000 because the chart still kind of looks close to the same. Obviously, it's way more extended here, but it's still the same pattern over and over again, you know. So any any of these charts, they just repeat themselves. Um, so like uh, as a very easy example on, and hopefully you guys can still see this. Let me know if you guys can't see when I switch to TD Ameritrade and all that. This Elfin stock that went absolutely crazy let me do this here really fast. Make it a little bit bigger for you guys to see. Um, it, it follows the exact same human motion patterns, all of us, all that stuff. So Bitcoin will literally do the same exact style of move. You know, right now we're kind of like right here at this moment. You know, it just dropped to 14,000. I think that's literally going to be a point that it does touch in a very, very soon future. Whether it's a week, two weeks it will eventually stabilize back to those flashpoints that it, that it goes to. Something that's pretty typical of things that I see happen. It will eventually stabilize to wherever that initial panic level was. So like on this 
Elf in, panics out. It kind of started to go down and actually stabilize and get to that level. Same things happen over and over and over again. So learn your charts, I guess is my um, simple thing. So uh, one of the other questions is best places to store and trade your cryptos. The security aspect, I'm not really going to get into that because I don't want to be held liable for anything that you lose because this stuff is so new. I don't even know what to fully do, what to fully trust. It's all digital money that, you know, who knows what could happen with it. So, you know, just be aware of that. Uh, but the best places, I think the easiest are GDAX for those four, or these four now. But Poloniex seems to have been pretty good, especially during the summer. There was only like 12,000 average people on it. Um, Binance is newer. They're fast, but a lot of people are just having you sign up because of the referral program. And the biggest thing that I absolutely hate about it is when you do any type of transfer withdraw out of Binance, they hold, they won't allow you for whatever reason, uh, to send off like the last three or four Satoshis of, uh, your currency. So like if you had... Uh, Ripple, and you had, you know, however many Satoshis it goes to, which is like, what, eight, two, four, six, it won't let you send off like the last, you know, if you buy 500 point, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, they won't let you send off the last like three numbers that just gets stuck there because of the limits that they have. I find that annoying. I don't like that at all. Um, also, the other one is if you guys can even sign up for it. Uh, my buddy said he tried to the other day and couldn't, is Bittrex. Um, I, uh, just from the experiences that I've had in the last six months using all of these, uh, I kind of like Bittrex a little bit more than Poloniex. I'm not endorsing either of them because I don't, who knows, they could shut down all of a sudden, but I think they're making so much god-awful money that that would be really stupid of them. Um, they've gotten way slower in the last few months, so I think they're actually upgrading their servers. So if a company is upgrading their 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 stuff and they're public about the information, they're probably making so much money that you know they're just going to keep the status quo and keep continuing to do what they do instead of screw over everybody that's you know their customers. So uh, honesty is usually the best policy with those things. Um, middle of the summer, there was some weird stuff with Poloniex because they wouldn't answer people. I think it was because they're just so busy. You know, if you're a company that has 25 employees and that was fine for the last six years, all of a sudden you get 40,000 emails, you know, it's going to take months for people to respond to you. So it, it really wasn't a surprise that when the GDAX flash crash happened to me, it took a month uh, to number one, get the funds that for whatever reason got locked up in the trade and then actually answer and solve the problem. So I think all these companies are so inundated with so many people, they just can't handle it. And it takes them so much time. So I'm not surprised when that actually happens. Um, I guess what I'll talk about right now is the, because it's so fresh, is the Bitcoin cash thing. So, so you know, I'm working on the thing. They add Bitcoin cash all of a sudden. And immediately in my head, because I had this conversation with Nate, who runs IU, if you guys don't even know that, uh, we talked about it. We're like, as soon as GDAX lists a new coin, everybody and their mother is going to sell off all the coins they have to make to play the new play. The reason behind that is most people have no idea about these other exchanges that you can trade stuff on, like CryptoKitties. I'll talk about that later, maybe. Uh, I put it on there just as a joke. But they all go, oh my God, there's a new coin. I want to play the new coin. They're going to sell off anything that they have to play the new coin. I had a conversation with Alex on the phone, you know, like right when it happened. If they would have allowed the trading the second that they listed it, instead of doing this post only mode, I would have traded it. But because they went into post only mode, my crazy brain said, oh my God, people are going to sell off all their stuff to trade this. So the immediate first play was to play the bounces on all the other, all these other coins because people are just selling them off because of kind of stupidity and greed. Um, you know, so you know, I text Nate, I'm like, Nate, you need to re, he had sold his Litecoin today finally after like seven months. And I was like, dude, you need to rebuy it and put it in like a two, literally on my phone. I was like, put it in a 277 bid. 
Uh, and that was like back here uh, to actually fill it. I doubt that he did, but you know, that kind of brings into play, uh, you know, why did I pick that number when it was up here? Um, you know, and I had three people ask me today, why did I pick the, when GBTC, which is a, a, a Bitcoin stock, you know, when it's sitting like right here, I literally said in the chat, like, you know, 20 minutes before it happens, I'm like, I'm looking for the 26, 30 level, somewhere around that area to actually buy this. Obviously, it flash prints down there. You know, I get fills in like the 44, 45, but it's, there's a psychology around the very specific numbers that uh, go into trading. So like you have your whole dollar number, you know, I would not be a buyer at 300, wait for it to flash under that number into specific numbers that you probably would have no idea to actually buy it, you know, 277. Who's going to put an order in a 277? But who's going to put an order in a buy at 300 and leave it there for a while? Probably a lot of people because it's a whole number. And if it breaks through a whole number, it's likely to go farther than you would actually think. So that's kind of a little bit of the theory behind that. And it, it works like you wouldn't believe. Um, you know, so what, $70 almost before it actually gets there having the exact number of where I think it's going to be beforehand is a very powerful tool. Um, also being able to read the fact that, you know, this is essentially level two to me. Being able to read level two is a skill that you kind of have to learn. You know, like it's very easily predictable to kind of get a good idea that while you're watching it and watching level two at the same time, where this bottom actually is. Because uh, the, the bottom is going to show yourself when everybody's exhausted and buying, when that last panic person has stopped, everything on, even on GDAX, it kind of freezes. There might be like one, two, three bids of the, the people who are still there. And it does exactly what it did, just like Bitcoin does. And it flashes back up 3000 bucks in two minutes. This happened like 15, 16 times all throughout the year. And it was very, very easy to make money in three minutes. Uh, very large sums of money because <laughs> it just, it's just, it's, it's the same pattern over and over again. Um, quant post only mode is, uh, I don't even really know it, but I think it's a sem essentially, think of post only mode, which is what Bcash is doing right now. Post only mode is kind of like, um, basically they're gonna let you put your orders in, but it's kind of like pre IPO where they're trying to match orders. Uh, they're not going to have a lot of inventory, which is why you would definitely not market by the second this starts trading. And, and I'll give you a little little goodie because if people are dumb enough to market by this stuff, there's no inventory until it'll probably flash to like 5,000, maybe even higher because there's literally no inventory on GDAX. So if somebody gets the brainy idea to say, I'm going to buy $25,000 worth of Bcash, you're going to buy it 5,000. Or, or higher. So if you trade this, do it limit, trust me, <laughs> unless you want to get absolutely punished. Uh, and that's my thoughts on that because somebody's going to do it because they're not going to know and they're going to regret it very quickly. Um, so I don't know, some people sent in some mining questions. I don't know a whole lot about mining. I don't mind. I tried to get into it and I literally just... <laughs> It's Arizona. It's way too hot. I'm not going to even bother with that. And plus, I don't want to have to deal with, you know, potential fires, you know, all that stuff. Um, I'd rather just trade it versus mine it and make money that way. So um, the best, I guess I'll kind of answer that. Best place to store this stuff is there's two things, at least that I found. You know, I'm not endorsing them, but uh, uh, that was it. Ledger. Um the Ledger Nano S is, and I'll talk about this browser as well because it's badass, um, is a hardware wallet. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm on the right one. I think it's this one. Is basically a place to store. I, I don't have this one, but I'm pretty sure this one stores uh, several of the actual coins. So like Bitcoin, all these ones. So that's the benefit. They don't have all of them, but they have some of the main big ones. So it's a big benefit for that. I think you can buy it for like a hundred bucks somewhere on Amazon, whatever. Um, I'm not going to give you any of my weird codes and all that stuff because that's just lame. Uh, <laughs> I don't need your five bucks. Um, 
And the other one is for, I, I feel like it's got some of the main ones, but I, it's mostly kind of like for uh, cryptos is the treasure. And these are just really simple things um, is treasure wallets. So all that stuff. So treasure, basically you can sell extensions, all this stuff and all that. Also security wise, you, there's a little thing right here. It's called MetaMask. Um, it's pretty cool. It's an extension. It also works on Chrome. I would download it. There's also another extension that you can see on my Ether wallet because people are getting hacked very easily. Um, it's not a bank. Blah, 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 blah. Um, this is really annoying that they added it, but I get it. Is this. So there's my Ether wallet and then there's EAL, which is Ether address lookup. It's kind of like a Chrome extension to verify that you're actually on that you can also click on linkable um, Ethereum addresses and it, it kind of gives you, I think, uh, a supposed warning if you're on a site that is not the correct site. So you don't enter in your private key on a phishing site and boom, there goes your money. Um, so be aware of that. Uh, so, yeah. Um, you guys feel like you're getting some good information? I know half of you can't answer, but if, for people in IU, let me know if you guys are enjoying this. Um, uh, one of the interesting questions was, can Litecoin be converted into altcoins like Bitcoin and Ethereum? Um, yes, I believe it's not Shaft. Good movie, though. Uh, sh Shapeshift. I think, um, where, I think it's shapeshift IO, shape, shift .io. where I, I don't use it, but I know it's one of the, the options where you can essentially do a quick, uh, conversion of putting, like you would deposit Bitcoin, but you also give your receiving address of whatever coin you want. So like if you wanted to change, uh, BAT to Decred, you would deposit, you would tell it your receiving address of Decred, deposit your BAT and all that. But there's an actual website that I found, um, which is called uphold.com. Let me see if I have this. I'm not gonna log into it, logged in. Um, but it's, uh, it is basically, and I'll, I'll maybe I'll show you. But it's called uphold.com. Let me see if I'm logged in or not. No. So let me just swing this over. So what this is, it's just a website that I found because of the Brave browser. Um, like I said, which is awesome. I'm not trying to promote them, but <laughs> I'm using them way more than anything else because of how awesome their ad blocking is automatically and their potential like future, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Um, Full disclosure, I have the BAT tokens, but I just, I actually started using this like three weeks ago and I was like, this is actually really awesome. But what this website does is, is it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a wallet, but within the wallet, there are, it gives you like little different cards and you can automatically transfer for probably the same fee or maybe a little bit higher shapeshift. But like if you had Bitcoin, you could go into your uphold wallet and switch to Litecoin immediately. Just like instead of selling it to, uh, and it, who knows if the fees are the same, I don't know, but it would be better than going to like your exchange, you know, going, oh, I have, I have Litecoin, you know, I want Ripple. So what you would have to do is you'd have to take your Litecoin, either sell it into Bitcoin and then buy it, or you would, you know, have to pay the fees to number one, do that twice. Um, or you'd have to just sell Litecoin into like US dollar tether and then buy Ripple. Whereas the shapeshift things, you just do it all automatically. You pay the fee and it's done. Um, one of the other ones is where can you look at, what was the question? How do you track crypto portfolio? It's a very interesting question <laughs> worded. But I found this website called coindash.io. Um, what it is is basically, and I found most of these things through, uh, looking up coins, oddly enough, um, on, I don't even think I have it up, on 
basically the, the market capitalization thing. I would spend hours researching most of these things to see if like number one, they're legit. If I like them, their potential future, blah, 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 forthcoming events for trades, all that crap. But I found them because what you can do is you can link. And I think right now the only one they have is Ethereum. So all your Ethereum tokens, I think they're adding it. You can link. Basically, all it does is it takes your Ethereum address and the tokens that are in the actual address, and it gives them to me on this nice UI. You can refresh it. You can you can kind of view it all nice and, and pretty looking. So um, the only other reason I started using it because I have an iPhone app, or uh, an app as well. So you can look at it on your phone under the same UI. You can't trade with it. You can't use it. It's basically like a portfolio viewer, but I like it. Whatever. Um, so that's that. Uh, I'm not really going to answer questions on coins because there's too many, and I'm not going to even go down that road because it's <laughs> it's a 15,000 hour conversation. Um, a good question though is, are you concerned at any point about being able to withdraw your earnings from Coinbase or any other exchange? No, because it's probably not a smart idea if you're not already like if you. Somebody made a really good post on Twitter today. If you're up a lot of money, take it off. Take some off the table. Don't overextend yourself and be 100% invested in this stuff. Number one, it's so new. Yes, you can make a lot of money, but as we just witnessed, you could also lose a lot of money very quickly. Um, you know, 361 to 278, you got to stop, you get hit, boom, there goes a lot of money. Take it off and send it to actual US dollars. Number one, because the market's super high right now, everybody's talking about this stuff, and it just goes back to trading. I take trades that nobody talks about because those are usually the best trades. Stuff that nobody's looking at, stuff that nobody cares about, as long as it's got a decent looking setup and, and all those other factors, that's what I like. Because everybody keeps asking me, you know, oh, should I invest in this stuff? I'm like, there's, there's two things. There's investing and there's trading. You can trade it right now, yes. Investing up here on all this stuff, you're probably not going to enjoy it. Uh, you know, <laughs> so trading and investing are two completely different things. And when people ask me, should I invest in something up here? Number one, I either don't answer them or, you know, I just give them my honest opinion. So I, th I think it's insane to buy something that's up 7,000 or 6,000% in two years. I mean, like, come on. It's not that hard to figure out uh, that you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> so, um, but back to kind of the main point of the question is take some money off the table, but what you should be aware of. And, you know, obviously it could be called fear, whatever, all this stuff, but it's very interesting information about um, Tether. So, and this is a conversation I don't think that people are having enough. You're essentially when you're trading on any of these things. So look at look at um, it's how how can I explain this? Think of like a bank that is going to support one of these exchanges. You know, if you're if you're if you're dealing in with real U.S. dollars being transferred, you're gonna have to as the exchange have a relationship or a partnership with a bank, like an actual. U.S. dollar bank, which GDAX has. And it, when you notice when you sign in, it says U.S. dollars. So it says USD. It does not say USDT. So USDT is essentially another cryptocurrency that, for whatever reason, and it's weird, they're just continuously printing more and more and more. And you can you can read about it more about um, if you just Google it and spend six hours of your life and reading about it. It's a little sketchy to me. Obviously, while the party's still going and everything's going up, there's not going to be a problem. Um, just like with the, uh, uh, what's the name of it? BitConnect. Uh, pfft, I think it's BitConnect.com. But as long as the party is going on, there's not going to be any problems. But as soon as people stop putting money into these things that are, in my opinion, multi-level marketing things are going to absolutely crush people, you're, they're 
going to collapse because when there's nobody else that you continue to sell to, uh, you know, what's, what's going to happen? Same exact thought process. If anybody has known or knows about it with Herbalife, they're a multi-level marketing thing. They screw people over. They, you lose a lot of money, but people really just don't give a crap at the moment about it because it's still working. It's still working in third world countries. It's still working. And, and the moment that it, it, people wisen up to it across the board on the world, that's when the, the real short actually comes in and that's when the company gets crushed. They have good products and I actually used it. So, I mean, that's fine. But multi-level marketing in itself is going to fail. Um, there's been so many other stocks listed that are MLMs that you're you're going to lose on. <laughs> uh, the only way it's good is if you're the first one in and the first one out. Um, and, and the kind of case in point, it's interesting to look at it, the way that I read it is that, you know, when I think it was Bitcoin or wherever it was, um, it was somewhere in here, I think where Bitcoin got weak, uh, for like, I think it was like a week or two weeks where it literally was just in a slow downtrend and somebody market cap wise on this BitConnect, they, you know, a market capitalization that just drops by 1.5 billion all of a sudden, it's not a coincidence. Um, but when the party kept getting better and more and more people started showing up, they just you kind of re re push it back in there. Um, so I think this is bound to not be a good thing. Uh, do with it what you will. Um, in my opinion, I, I stay away from that kind of stuff. But always take some stuff off the table. If you're up a, a lot of money, I mean, get it in U.S. dollars because that's still like legitimate actual stuff that you're going to go use. If you go to the store, you're going to use it. You know, just don't be dumb. Don't put all your money in this cryptocurrency. I love it, but let's – it's way overpriced for where it is technologically is, I guess, my thing. Trading it, 100%. Investing in it up here, you're probably crazy. So obviously, look what just happened with Bitcoin Cash. Printing 9,500, which is absolute insanity because somebody <laughs> market buys this stuff. And it, that's exactly what happens. These people are going to get screwed. And it's, uh, it's swear word after swear word of stupidity. Um, and it, it's so hard to... Um, it's so hard to explain why, why people do this. You know, that's why, you know, market orders on this stuff, uh, it, 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 it hurts me because people are going to lose their ass on this. Um, anyways, sorry, I got so caught up on that because that's just straight up lunacy. Uh, let me get back to the, the, the question because I know everybody's going to start watching this because I started to, to look at it too, but you see what my point is with a limit order. Um, these people that bought this, I hope there wasn't a whole bunch of size, but you know, two market orders, how many actual went across here? Maybe 50, maybe 50 actual coins. So those people are going to be like, Oh my God, why did I do that? You know? So be smart. Uh, mm, yeah. Okay. Back on to that. Uh, if you guys have questions, by the way, if you're um, in the webinar, just use the, I'll try, I can never remember how to pop this out. Use the go to webinar questions tab that's uh, that's down there. So uh, I just pulled it up. I always forget to, and I already have a bunch of questions. So I know I won't be able to answer them, um, but uh, I'm gonna read through them really fast. Gemini is good, Gemini is the, the Winkle Losses Exchange. I don't use it, but I heard it's actually really good. Um, Exodus Wallet has Shapeshift. Okay. Uh, I don't really... I know some people that use it. I just don't use it. So I, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. Uh, you can swing trade. Swing trade in crypto, I've obviously just, you know, market buying. Or not market buying, but buying and holding has obviously worked over the last year. I don't think it's going to continue to work. Um, I think we're in a very, uh, we're in a point that selling the pops is going to be everything. So buying dips, selling pops. It was, it's almost like, um, Ethereum when Ethereum hit 420, uh, you know, 
my gut just said, you know, this is the top on Ethereum, at least for a while. It downtrended all the way, and I just waited for it at, like, I think it was, like, 132. And, you know, I start, when things start to interest me, that's when I'll start paying attention, really close attention to them. And uh, you're probably going to find yourself not looking at this stuff, but always be cognizant of where stuff was at and where it's going to be. Because there's going to be trade opportunities, at least on, you know, pullbacks and ramps and on all that stuff. But, yeah, um, swinging has <laughs> worked the best. Uh, what do I use to scan for charts? Uh, if somebody has a better one, let me know. But uh, I feel like I'm probably behind on it is just coin market cap. I'll look at all the coins. I'll see what's moving. And it's probably pretty slow, but I know you can use, like, Coinigy or the other charts that are out there, and you can have a whole a whole display of them. Um, I haven't gotten that intense in a crypto, I guess, but uh, I just use this. I pull up kind of like what I see at least on the last seven days. So any kind of decent trend, you know, kind of like Bitcoin gold. I heard it was a scam when it first came out, but I would be surprised if it goes because of the whole Bitcoin Cash edition. But I'll just kind of look at the seven-day chart because if I'm going to make a trade, it's going to be relevant within the last seven days. I want something that, you know, is either absolute panic mode, uh, you know, not like Einsteinium, which is that's a crazy move. But, you know, uh, an actual panic, like straight down kind of ugly looking chart or a chart that's trending up. And I think it's, it's you know, worthy of a buy. Um, those are the kind of things I look for. It's probably pretty dumb, simple scanning, but that's the scanning that I do. I don't really have any other magical answer for that one. Um, uh, a few grand and six figures. That's awesome. I've heard some people make insane amounts. Um, there's a, lot, well, there's a few ripple questions. Like, what do I think of ripple? It's extremely fast. Uh, as far as payments go, um, the day that the Ripple Twitter posted their speed and all that stuff, uh, uh, it was like a, a, an idiot dumb long to me, you know. So as soon as they posted it, I think I bought it at like 26, 27. And I was like, you know, this is going to easily get spread around. People are going to notice this. And, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. So that's that. Um, Going into 2018, I've gotten this question a lot. What do you think is going to happen next year? I think you're going to fall in one of two categories. You're either an investor, you're not going to look at this stuff and buy it and, and um, get rid of it, or you're going to trade it. Uh, I think if you buy it at all, anyways, you're probably going to pay attention to it because it, it, it makes such crazy moves. It's going to be hard to not have somebody tell you about it. So just trade the trend that's out there. It's it's kind of a, a thing that if you're not a, you know, a seasoned trader, which I'll assume most of you are or aren't, I would say aren't, um, I would say seasoned is if you've been doing it for like three years, two years at least, uh, consistently almost every day profitable, or at least on average monthly, um, that you just trade the trend that you see and know and trade what you know, trade the charts that you know, avoid getting caught into promoted ones because there's a lot out there. Um, you know, so just kind of be aware of that. Uh, don't buy because of what somebody else tells you. That's kind of like rule number one. Like, don't buy because somebody else. If somebody tells me about something, I'll look at it. But I'm not going to be like, oh, okay, I'll buy it, whatever. Um, so, yeah. Um, second kind of thing. I don't know how many of you guys are just crypto versus stocks. But there's been some very easy trades in the stock market because of these crypto moves. So because of these crypto moves, as far as like Bitcoin stuff, obviously people have seen the insanity. You put a PR into a stock that if IPO a day ago and it runs to 450 because it literally has the name Bitcoin. So it's kind of like the dot-com boom. If it has the PR, it's going to go. Um, <laughs> it's pure insanity to me, but insanity could still make you a million bucks. Um, so just kind of be aware of that. Uh, and, it, and it creates so many other trading opportunities if you are a stock trader as well, because you just can find the trends. And a lot of them, you know, I'm not promoting this at all. Um, my scanning process was 
look for any OTC because most of these are going to be OTCs, just turds. Look for a name change that's anything to do with crypto. Look at the domain name that they might have changed it to. Look at all that stuff. It takes a long time, but this game is not easy. So I think I noticed it somewhere. No, it was actually way before that. Um, yeah, it was back here. So I noticed like in November, like before I actually left, I was like, LRSV and I looked at the domain name and it, all they had was like a cryptocurrency website. I'm like, oh my God, this is so easy. Like in a way, just buy it and hold on to it until they do the inevitable rip on this, this move. And, you know, it's pretty obvious to me, but, you know, I've, I've seen these things happen over and over again. So, you know, I'm sitting there waiting, 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 goes 25. And then as soon as it breaks that 24, I mean, it was like party time. Um, so yeah. Uh, couple marijuana questions. I think, and this brings up a good point. I posted about it uh, earlier today where I felt like some of these um, crypto stocks like DPW and all these other ones, all they were doing all day long was selling into you. They would prop the bid. So they would essentially, they would know that, okay, we might absorb a few thousand shares of people that are selling into us, but it's the people that are blindly buying that they're just selling the massive size into. Um, and I think the, the biggest obvious one, if somebody can remember it, it was, it was like $2.90. Uh, what the f I traded it today. Um, can somebody remember an IU? But it's, um, it's very obvious when, when they're bid propping and selling into everybody at the exact same time. Number one, they have open, uh, I don't think it was Mara, but they have um, open shelves where they have these shares to sell to you, and it's stupid simple. Um, yeah, it was OTI, OTIV, I think it was. Yeah, so OTIV, I kind of said it in the middle of the day. You know, I was long into this move because number one, it's a crypto. I'm like, okay, they could let it go. Who knows? Um, they kind of were holding it all down here the other day. But what really interests me was what they let it do pre-market. Um, I kind of figured, okay, if they let this go, they're going to let it go and it's going to go fast. But what you got to realize, and I knew it, that they were just putting these fake bids to get people to buy it up, was simple technical analysis. I knew that, you know, if two nineties or threes broke, okay, now they're probably going to let it go. If it retests the three, I'm fine with that. Um, don't buy into these. But what I noticed is every time somebody would just sit there, I'm just sitting at 290 with probably all the shares in the world to sell you at the same time as they kept pushing it back up into that 290 level. And after I saw it for the third time, I was like, no, not a chance that I'm just going to hold on to this. Uh, you know, and I didn't pay attention to the end of the day, but that's what happens when you get a good feel for how to trade all this stuff and you see the action, you see what's actually going on behind the stock price, especially if they're manipulating it and moving it, whatever. Um, it's just kind of that easy to read this stuff. You know, so I was like, I'm not touching this. I, I think I said I sold it and I'm like, I'm not touching it until I'll pay higher over three because that kind of confirms that, all right, they were propping it, but they're going to let it actually run this time. Um, so be aware of that, at least in the stock world. In the, in the crypto world, People are just losing their minds at the moment. I think the party is not over, but it's it, it's at its wit's end. I think the dumb money is going to be buying after Christmas. Um, I think that's going to be the last round of the herds of people that are going to go, oh, you made all this money with crypto, but now you're going to have the same conversation in six days of, oh, it just went from 19000 to 14000 in one day you know, that's going to be talked about. So it's, it's going to put some fear into other people that were even considering it. Like, Oh, it's so, it's so violent. It's all this stuff. Now had it held 18,000 for the next few days, I'd be saying different, but because of today and that move, anybody who doesn't know, and they're, like I said, they're dumb money. You're going to get a return to the mean, probably at about 17, five, maybe 18, maybe who knows what B cash is going to do to this stuff. Um, and it's going to likely not break out. Now I could be wrong. Could break over 20, but I really don't think so. Um, I think, uh, I don't think the party's over, but the, the, the music is slowing down big time. 
And that's my honest opinion because that's how I read the chart. That's how I read the emotions. And you got to remember, guys, in one year, what was this last year? A thousand? It's gone up almost 20 times in one year. Just let that sink in for a moment. Um, and if you haven't taken any gains, you're, it's, I'm not going to say you're crazy, but you're crazy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, let me grab another question here so I don't go off into a tangent and drink some water. Um, oh yeah, the marijuana stuff. <clears throat> Sorry, I needed some water. Middle of the day today, I kind of got, I got, I got like this feeling as far as just watching Bitcoin. I got uh, basically a gut instinct watching Bitcoin in the middle of the day. And I was like, dude, it, it's just not, it, it doesn't seem to have that much gusto at the moment. You know, over last night, I thought it would actually break out, uh, you know, into 20 the other day. If it failed to hold 18.5 for the next day, all day today, you know, it was a little concerning to me. You know, so I'm like, I just feel like everybody's getting kind of exhausted. Companies are selling shares into people. You know, so I started kind of exiting across the board all these Bitcoin things. But the underlying theme that started before all that crypto stuff was upcoming marijuana legalization in California, which is the biggest country. It's going to be the biggest move. I heard there's some delays, all that, whatever. But I still think that's the underlying trade that all the money's been going into Bitcoin plays, that the money will, if people are up, will likely filter into those because of the headlines that are probably going to be coming out about uh, marijuana in California. Uh, it'll probably be all of the news, you know, oh, this company's this, this company sold out of their stuff day one. Like those are the kind of headlines that you're going to see of these locations in California that probably sell out day one, just like it happened in Colorado, Seattle, Vegas. Those are the headlines that are kind of going to come out. And I think that that's kind of a super easy trade in my mind. Um, and a lot of them have started and they've kind of helped, but that's my thought on that. There's a few, uh, I guess while I'm on the subject, there's a few, uh, where the heck was I? There's a few, um, marijuana coins. I thought because, and this is like my thought, you know, there was pot coin, obviously it's still up, so it could still do its thing. But every time this thing runs, they just sell everything into it. So any big ramps, they just sell right into everything. Ramped up, they sold into it. As long as it holds like 27, it might be okay. I just don't like how it trades versus, I think it was like THC was the other one that I found. Um, it tends to trade more authentically versus somebody having big size selling into you. So like if you look at the difference as far as like kind of overall trend in the last month, uh, I think CAN was one of the other big ones. Um they just trade a little bit better than the pot coin one that I thought was actually kind of like the, the, the bigger one. Um, so those are something that I'm going to pay a lot of attention to because of uh, this move right here. So all the mayor, I didn't even know about these coins at this point. I knew about maybe Ethereum, but these are the kind of moves that these marijuana coins, uh, anything marijuana can do. So I think this thing 25 X in the matter of three weeks, two weeks. So those are the kind of trades that I look for is stuff that people forgot about. People don't know about, or what I think people are going to be talking about or doing in the future, because those are the trades that you're going to get dumb money to come in. Who doesn't know the market. They don't know how the functionality works. They're going to hear about it from a friend. Oh, I made 25 grand. I made a hundred grand on this marijuana stock and they're going to buy it because of that. Um, and always take gains, you know, in these gigantic moves because that's usually where the dumb money's coming at anyway. So just kind of be aware of that. Um, that was quite a few of those questions. Um, I think with the, the marijuana stocks that are out there, uh, what I've seen at least the last three years is there's always a few, like three or four that are brand new, like you find them on otcmarkets.com, just like <laughs> OWCP. So originally, and I have to put it in like the weekly, but um, here we'll do daily, there we go. 
So like with OWCP, it was a fresh brand new like uh, one that was in October. I'm just scanning, looking at volume. I'm like, what is this this thing that you know has this weird chart? OWCP. I'm like, oh, it's a marijuana one. And I trade it from like 008 to like one three, and I sell it all. Um, you know, but looking back at it, I was like, oh my gosh, all they did, and this is very not obvious, but it's it's kind of research that you do. Um, you get a feel for what these things do, but basically all they were doing right here and here these these five six days was they were buying the float, um, which means they're basically locking up every single share that's out there and they're leaving a little bit freely trading, uh, probably a few million, maybe ten million, which allows it to squeeze because if all the inventory is being held by one person, you're going to have to pay higher for shares. It's just supply and demand. Um, so they lock the shares for basically three months. It goes from sub penny to three dollars, and then they could probably they're able to unload. And most of this, while well, everybody's you know kind of talking about it, they unload in here, they unload some in there, they unload on the way down, and they turn their triple O three investment into you know tens of millions of dollars. And the same thing was kind of with like CN, I think it was CNBX, same exact thing. You know, they buy the float back down here uh, into this move. Essentially, I think this one was a lesser of a float. They lock the float and they just hold it and let it go. So when you realize that kind of stuff, especially with like OTC stocks, it can become pretty easy. But like I said at the beginning, every single year there's always new ones. So that's kind of what I did when I first got interested. And again, it's not a, a suggestion to buy or trade any of this stuff, which I feel like is obvious. But I look at, I, I see kind of the same charts. I'm like, okay, this is kind of the exact same thing. There's a ton of volume. They're just buying the float right here at one. I'm happy with just taking the shares and holding on to them because of the OWCP move that I saw happen last year. You know, so I'm sitting at like a, a one five average, you know, and it was pretty awesome. And I'm just trying to stay as patient as I can with that. I'll probably get excited if it goes to like 20 or something like that. But same kind of thing. There was another one. I think it was can be whatever. Uh, same kind of like formation where they just buy up all the shares kind of right in here and then they they hold it where they buy it. Same thing over and over again. Um, whereas the old ones, they don't trade as well because they've already got warrants that are out there. They're able to sell into these moves and they just they want to take the cash right off the table immediately. Like can today. Um, actually, I think it was yesterday. Obviously, it was a big mover already this year, but they just filed something yesterday for a four million private placement at like a dollar and you want to read this stuff because it's super important so they file a um four million dollar placement at one dollar so these guys got four million shares at a buck which are uh exercisable immediately so think about yourself you just bought a four you bought you spent four million dollars at a dollar a share stock sits at three you just tripled your money by doing this private placement they're going to come into the market and they're going to smack it uh, because you're up, what, eight million bucks by doing the private placement with them because they can secure that four million dollars in financing and crush the stock because they, they ran it up. So be aware of that stuff. Uh, it, it's super important. I hope I'm recording this because I don't have to say it all over again. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but let me find another crypto question. How what time is it? 644. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not going to answer like specific, uh, coin questions because that's just, it's another whole different thing that I don't really want to go down that road other than Bcash. That's just stupid. Uh, I don't even know if they halted it or what they did, but that's dumb. That's just dumb. Um, and yes, you could probably arbitrage Bcash at the moment. Um, but my hunch was, I think that they, they said something where you can't, they're not accepting transfers or something for like four hours. And I've tried to do the arbitrage thing with one of these other coins on a different thing. It just doesn't work. By the time it actually transfers over to where you're trying to send it, the market's even out. So it's just kind of a waste of your time. All it does is it, it it's another theory that I have as far as watching what miners do. I think it's a super easy way for, like if you if you go buy this at like Poloniex right now at 3300 and you're like oh I'm gonna arbitrage it at, at GDAX, all you're doing is giving your money to the miners because by the time that that stuff probably gets there because of the overload of all the transfers to it, 
and I could be wrong. It's just a theory. I think it will even out. You're not going to be able to arbitrage it for 8,000 bucks. So you'll maybe make 200 on a share. Maybe. Uh, so be aware of that. It, the arbitrage just doesn't work like you, like I thought it would, at least the times that I tried it. Um, so yeah. Um, if you want to buy one of my crypto kitties, <laughs> just kidding. Let me close that. Uh, I'll sell one later. I'm still holding on to all those. Um, let me answer another question. John McAfee is going to pump a coin higher as real deal. Uh, maybe, um, whatever. I don't know. Um, there's only a few legit coins that are out there that I would actually, I'm not even going to say the word, but there's a few coins out there that I think have actual legitimate projects that are actually going on. Um, and, and some of them might be these. I, it, like I, it's so hard to keep up with reading about the stuff that moves, you know, 100%. And that's where I do the research is if something is up 200% in a day, I'm going to look at it and be like, okay, what does the team look like? What are they doing? Do they actually have anything? What's going on? What, is it legit? You know, scroll through Twitter, look at all the posts, look at the old posts that, you know, happened before it moved, what caused it to move. You got to take all that into account. And so just by reading some of the stuff, like find out some of these coins, you know, I'll look at them and be like, okay, that one's actually kind of cool. They actually have a project like the brave one. They actually have a working browser that works that I like. They block ads. Um, the potential for it is there. Those are the kind of things that I'll, I'd like to at kind of the, any price right now, buy it and hold on to it because it's just how my brain works. Um, number one, I moved it over into the brow, my, my stuff into the browser and, I did not realize that it was unidirectional. So everything that I put into the Brave browser with the tokens, I can't take them out anyways. So um, I'm kind of stuck holding on to them. <laughs> so regardless of what happens, I'm in for the ride. Uh, uh, so yeah, Inter interesting question. How do I spot fake bids? Um, on GDAX, it's, not so much fake bids. It's it definitely is on the stocks because they can do that. I don't think you can hide size on here. So they do some pretty interesting little games with micro bids. So they'll they'll micro bid it up or micro bid it down with like zero zero or like the one four lots. I don't really see it now, but if I go to like uh, so like if you you see how these these um and they're most of them are legit, but. We'll try to find the pairings of them. Everything's moving so fast, I can't keep up with it. But you'll see like the same exact lot size over and over and over again. Uh, so like this, you can kind of see it. Eh, maybe not zero eight zero eight, and you can see those sometimes stacked across the board, which kind of lets me know somebody's got like a computer program running to put those in there. Um, and it happens across all of them. But you can, there's no regulation against this stuff, so they can spoof orders more than likely. They can put it in there for a split second, take it off for a split second, and it, it can do exactly how the flash crash happened on the U.S. futures market the same way. If I, if I just keep, you know, putting a 3,000 offer lower, 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 lower every time somebody keeps selling into it, so if I keep moving this down a penny every time people hit the bids, it's going to scare people into just continuously hitting the bids until I pull that offer and then it, it rip sticks back to wherever it originally was. Um, happens a million times. Um, do I have any thoughts on why overstock? Well, I have puts on overstock because I had a feeling that Bitcoin was going to get crushed. So um, overstock is up because of Bitcoin. Um, in my I mean, they're, number one, they were like the first big place. I don't know if they held on to any of it to actually accept Bitcoin, I think like in 2014 or something like that. So they um, they probably have a whole bunch. And if they have a whole bunch of cryptocurrency that's up 20 times, it's going to, by default, increase their market cap. Pretty simple. Um, because the value of their assets is increasing exponentially. So if they're if the value of their assets is now decreasing exponentially, it's going to crush the stock as well. So it's kind of simple in that regard. Um, uh, let me see here. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know if Ripple's going to get added. It might. Who knows? I think there is... Um, somebody posted it yesterday. Within the API access of GDAX, and you can maybe quote me on it, but they, they said Bitcoin Cash was in the API thing and Ethereum Classic was also in the API like new page that was kind of like slid in there and posted probably by accident. Who knows? Like if you wanted to set up an API to trade this stuff, it showed Bitcoin Cash and it also showed uh, Ethereum Classic. So the speculation on the Bitcoin Cash was obviously right because that guy posted it like last night. So um, I'm not I'm not too surprised by it. Um, what do I think long term about Crypto Kitties? I think it's a great way to kill five minutes of your time and spend whatever amount of money you want to on them. Um, so, uh, do with it as you will. Who knows? Any, anything that's the first of something is very interesting to me. And the fact that somebody spent 114 grand on one of them, that interests me. So it's like, I'm taking a shot in the dark and I'm buying like 50 different ones. I'll breed them and make a cool one, whatever that I have no idea. Probably Beanie Babies, and it's just a waste of money. Um, I don't participate in any ICOs. Uh, blockchain stocks, yes, I'm trading blockchain stocks. Uh, where do I scan OTCs that can potentially go on crypto news? Eh, it's more, uh, I just spend hours uh, sometimes, and sometimes I don't. Uh, OTCmarkets.com. Uh, number one, I'll look for... Uh, where is it? I can never find the actual page. No, no, no. Here it is. Um, I'll go to like view market activity for all securities. I'll go to see more on most actives. And then it's just a matter of going down the list. I try to avoid all the ones with the Y. It starts with dollar volume. I care about the dollar volume the most. Um, because if there's no dollar in there, it's not like liquid enough for me to even be interested in touching it. Uh, unless I have a very good inclination that it's likely to be a uh, promoted stock. The rest, sometimes you got to keep secrets, but um, there's other ways, but that's where I scan for those. You got to figure that part on yourself. Sometimes you can't, you can't say everything that you do because it took you six years to figure it, <laughs> figure it out. Um, if you give away all your edges, then you have no edge. Um, tokens versus coins. I think you mean like Ethereum tokens versus coins. Somebody made an awesome point when I actually asked the question because I'll ask questions if I don't know. I mean, why wouldn't you? Uh, I have no massive ego that says if I don't know something, why wouldn't I ask? But he, he made the good point of don't don't uh, hold on to necessarily tokens like you would protocols. So protocols versus tokens, like coins, are protocols. Like Ethereum is a protocol. And stuff is built off of the Ethereum protocol. Like CryptoKitties is bu built off of the Ethereum protocol. So you, you wouldn't hodl CryptoKitties, but you would hodl, and I'll say a hodl, yeah, uh, is uh, I think Ethereum. Like you would, you would um, own what stuff is built off of. So if people are building stuff off of Ethereum, you'd want to own what it is. So like if I want to trade a, Crypto Kitty. If I don't have the Ethereum, I can go into Shapeshift. I can buy Ethereum, put it in there, and trade with it, and and buy the kitties, whatever. Just kind of like uh, Decentraland. Decentraland is is I have no idea what it is, but I was interested in it because I'm like, uh, I think I made a post like last year, like if there's an online real estate thing that you can buy virtual land in a 3D world, I want in first. Uh, whatever, waste my money or who knows. But I, you can kind of take that down a level where there's Ethereum, there's the Decentraland token, but now there's also, it, it kind of turns itself into a protocol for that world because you're going to need to buy, if you want to participate in that world that they have, you need to own the token for, or yeah, you need to own the currency for that thing. Does that make sense? It's like four levels of thinking. I don't know if it helps or not, but that's uh, that's my thoughts. Uh, Mike, I don't think you would buy the necessarily just blindly buy dips on the alts. I think, like I just said 20 minutes ago, that you would um, trade the trend. If they if they wash out, 
sell the rip. Uh, I honestly think that Bitcoin is going to have some trouble. Uh, but like I said, you'll probably get the dumb money to buy it back to the return of the mean. Um, I think they're, what is it? Uh, human emotion in, in, in a... It's, so human emotion in a stock chart. I think it's, um, it's the same one over and over again. This one right here. Uh, everybody was already, we were kind of at that point at about 19,000 where, um, and this is, this is like, this stuff works. So the first sell off I feel like was at, I think it was maybe like 3000. So I went from like 3000 back to like 1900 or something like that. That was kind of like right here. Takeoff was the breakout over a thousand from the previous high. This was the 3000 mark. Uh, obviously we had the media attention, we have enthusiasm, which was, um, Thanksgiving. That's Thanksgiving right here. You got greed. So people are now just are buying at any price. Everybody's like, Oh my gosh, this is it. people that own it. Now everybody's talking about it on the weekend. Oh my gosh, you know about this currency, this currency, blah, 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 blah. Um, people are holding on to it. And then you have today where, it, it just washed out to 14,000. It was 19,000. It did a wash out to 14,000. At least on here, most other places, it was like 6,000. Okay, pretty simple. It's gonna bull trap. You're gonna get the dumb buyers to send it back up to like 17,5. And then you're gonna have this part. That's my honest opinion. Because we're, we're, we're already there. If you look back at history about futures, every single time that futures have been listed on something, it kills it, just like uh, just like the tulips. When they introduce futures, goodbye. Uh, I watched like a four-hour thing on that tulips yesterday, but uh, it's when when you when you introduce futures and you introduce way smarter money. Number one, it's way more money, and their four billion dollars could crush your thirty to thousand dollar account or whatever you have <laughs> with with no effort whatsoever. So they can just they can essentially control it with their money. And they're like, oh, we're going to, we're going to crush this thing because number one, if, if they have the power to, and they can just print their dollars, they can send it down to whatever price they want because now they could just literally short it and they can continue to short it until the end of time. Because if you have a printing press that can short these other things, you're going to win. And then they can just buy it back if they want to cover it, you know, at the smart money area. So it's all my theory. It's all my thoughts. Uh, it's been an hour. You guys have any, are there any legit companies on the OTC market? Um, maybe three out of most of them. Probably even less than that. Um, if the, the, the Canadian ones, probably. I Who knows? I'm sure there aren't some of them, but most of the U.S. ones that have four letters, Absolutely not. Uh, there was one case, and I'll end up, there was one case where it was um, True Religion Jeans was a stock promotion. It was like one of the very first ones where uh, it was a, just a blatant promotion of a company. They ran the stock, but lo and behold, the, the, the actual jeans caught on, and the company actually started to make so much money that the stock promotion worked, and they, the company actually <laughs> became a legitimate very popular company. Uh, and that's like one of the, the, the black swans where it's like, Oh my God, like this promoted company that they planned on selling shares for the company or whoever became legit. Uh, so an OTC could become a legit company, but odds are they're selling you shares because they just either want the money and they're doing research, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Um, but they're there mostly to sell you shares. Um, yeah, it's recorded. We'll post it somewhere. Um, anybody have any other questions? I need water and I need food. Um, I'll give you guys, uh, I'll answer this one other question. If you guys have any other questions, post it. Um, what is that browser? The browser is my new favorite. Uh, it's called Brave. Um, it's like an ad blocker that you can actually monetize with YouTube creators. Um, they can kind of circumvent all that stuff. Um, 
everything loads faster. There's also going to be an option that um, uh, you can actually l allow the ads. So it automatically blocks ads. It blocks scripts. And then you can like, uh, uh, I think in the future, if you actually allow it, you can, you can view the ads and you can make money off viewing the ads. So it's like saying, okay, yeah, I, I want to make five bucks for looking at your website, dude. Uh, because then you allow the ads to come through and you get paid in the, the Brave token or whatever it is. Same guy that made Firefox and the same guy that invented Java. So to me, it's just to buy it and see what happens. Whatever. Um, just my thought. Um... What kind of beverages do you serve my programmers? I don't have any programmers. <laughs> I drink, uh, uh, my wife calls it um, brain water. And so I drink that uh, scammy ionized 9.5 pH water. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so, uh, yeah. No other questions, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Let me know on Twitter, whatever. I don't care. Um, I probably could keep going for another three hours, but I'll give myself a sore throat. Uh, be smart. Don't buy micro. Don't buy. Don't buy with market orders like these geniuses did. And yeah, hope you guys have a good night. How I stop.